Welcome everybody to my channel. My name is Cord, and today I'm taking a look at belt compression in Factorio uh, version 0 0.14. Uh, last night I was watching a video by Mad Zuri where he did the similar the similar test back in uh, 0 0.12, but as far as I know, no one has done these tests since then, and a lot has changed since 0 0.12 and 0 0.13. Uh, a lot of properties of belts change and also some stuff with uh, circuit circuitry change and I'm not sure if that circuitry changes really matter but it made things easier for me to test at least so that was nice um, if you do know of someone else uh, that has made a video testing these things let me know and I'll put a link in the description I'm also going to put a link to uh, Mad Zuri's original video in the description as well um, so you guys can watch it and uh, also I want to point out that I'm using the creative mode mod by Mooncat, I believe. So um, it makes it really easy to get fully compressed belts and also empty off belts using this item void. Uh, so that looks like something you might be interested in. It makes it really helpful for testing things. Like this isn't a real game. This is just my test world. So if you want to test stuff, I suggest using creative mode. So... Uh, belt compression. If you don't know what that is, it's how dense items are on a belt. So you could get a really densely uh, packed belt like this, um, or you could get a much less densely packed belt like this down here. And um, the goal of this video is to test different ways of loading a belt in order to maximize item density on the belt. Um, you want to put as many items on the belt as possible so that those items get uh, transferred over to your assemblers throughout your factory you know, at a, at a fast rate, more efficiently. It might as well have one fully compressed belt than two like half compressed belts, right? Uh, you, that way you don't need the space taken up by the belts and you don't need the resources for those two belts. So you might as well fully compress all your belts as often as possible. So let's take a look at this circuitry machine that I have here, Combinator Machine. Um, I'm not super familiar with Combinators. This took me a while to set up, even though I was basically following Mad Zuri's uh, exact design, or almost exact design. So um, while this does work correctly, as far as I know, uh, it might not be the most efficient uh, way of setting up the combinator so if you know of ways to improve optimize the circuitry let me know and so I can learn that because I'm not very familiar um, but just a quick explanation over here on the left this is basically a memory cell we're going to be reading and recording as items pass over this segment of track down here and we want to remember uh, the number of items that pass over this for an extended period of time, which is 10 seconds. We're going to be remembering how many items have passed over this uh, for 10 seconds. And then we're going to be transferring that data over here, and we're going to be averaging that. So we're going to take the total number of items over 10 seconds, and then we're going to say, okay, since, you know, a thousand items, let's say, have crossed this belt in 10 seconds, that must mean that the belt is transferring items at a rate of whatever per second. So here's a quick example. Uh, let's go with the yellow belt here. Uh, these items are coming over here, and I mean it's going to take 10 seconds to get this average going, but if you don't know, a uh, yellow belt should transfer items at 13.3 items per second. So we can see uh, this is the 10 spot, this is the 1 spot, and this is the 10th spot. So 13 and change like we expect. Uh, so this is this records how many items have gone over in the last 10 seconds. And then over here, we're averaging that and then just displaying it in a nice way so that we can see it without you know, hovering over uh, a combinator and trying to do it that way. So, okay, so we know yellow belts are accurately counted. Let's take a look at red belts. And, oh, just, think, just FYI, it doesn't matter how many red belts you have as long as one of them is red the rate all the way down is slowed and that looks kind of trippy so I'm gonna leave it like that while this counts up a red belt is twice as fast as a yellow belt if you didn't know that 
So since yellow belts are 13.3 items per second, we would expect red belts to be 26.6 items per second. So you can see that here, 26.6 uh, or 7 right there, looking great. And then let's take a look at red belts. Or sorry, we just took a look at red belts. Let's take a look at blue belts. Blue belts are three times as fast as a yellow belt. So 13.3 times 3 is 40. So we expect 40 items per second to be transferring over this one individual belt here. And that is what we're finding, exactly 40 items per second. So that's great. We are good to go to do some, do some more interesting tests. So what kind of more interesting tests? Well, let's test splitters to begin with. So if we just have two full belts, whoops, two full blue belts feeding into a splitter, the splitter will preserve those belts, that those belts compression. So we have two full belts, the output is still a full belt, as you can see here. So that's great. So splitters, uh, they're not hurting anything so far, right? So that's good. Good to know. Good starting place. Let's take a look at a yellow belt. Let's throw a yellow belt in here. So blue belt plus the yellow belt, still keeping the compression. We're not losing any items somehow. So that's great. What if we throw in a red belt? Uh, a yellow belt plus a red belt should equal a blue belt. One third plus two thirds equals, you know, three thirds. Uh, and it looks like the splitter is accurately uh, and correctly combining those belts and not losing any compression. So that's that's great. Let's do a little bit of an ex extended test over here and do three yellow belts, which again should add up to a blue belt. Let's just make sure the splitters are working perfectly so we just know for sure. Yep, and it looks, it looks just like we're getting 40 items per second still, so that's great. Uh, so splitters preserve uh, compression, so splitters are a great way to go if you can uh, use splitters to combine your belts. Uh, they will output compressed belts if possible, so that's a great way to go. So let's, oh I have the wrong blueprint. And now I'm just cycling through all the blueprints I have on this world. Okay, so let's take a look at one other way to fill a belt. And that's just with simple inserters. So currently I have uh, the inserter capacity bonuses researched in this world, in this uh, creative world. So normally each inserter would pick up three items at a time. But for this test, I've limited them to only pick up one item at a time. So you can see they're just dropping one item, uh, and there's just a whole bunch of just inserters dropping one item at a time. And what we see, if we first we should look visually, just so we can kind of see. And visually, just eyeballing it, there's a lot of space in there. You know, it's not perfect. Even though these last couple of inserters aren't inserting anything, you know, there's a bunch of space. There's not enough room for a new item, but there's a bunch of space there. Anyway, so if we look over at the high-tech counter, it looks like 31, 32 items, maybe 33 items right about there. So not great compression. 30 items out of 40 would be 75% compression, which isn't great. If you got a 75% on a test, you know, that's not great. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not, you know, in Factorio, it's all about efficiency and doing stuff as great as possible. We, we want that number to be high 90s, if not 100% compression. So, you know, those will, yeah, just inserting with the inserters, just insert, yeah, inserters, insert. Just uh, filling about with inserters is not the way to go, it looks like. Uh, but let's see what happens when we start using uh, the when we start using the inserter capacity bonuses. So let's let this run a bit. Oh, do I need a few more inserters here? I want to make sure that it's 
as compressed as it's going to get, and it's not a lack of inserters that's the problem. Okay, so these last few inserters aren't running, so that's good. So we look visually, and it, there's a lot less space than before, but there is still some space. So let's look over here. Uh, 35, 36. So it was 31, 32. So it's a lot more compressed. We're doing a lot better. Those bonuses have really helped, but it's not perfect yet. So let's see if we can do any better. Let's just get rid of all this junk. And let's use stack inserters. These were, whoops, let's have the belt go the correct way. Um, these were new in uh, 0 0.13. And if we just look visually, they are a lot better at compressing a belt. There's still, you know, a couple little gaps here and there, but overall they're a lot better. You know, there's one, there's one. So that looks like 38, 39 items per second, which 40 is the max, remember? So that's really good. That's that's really good compression. As long as all the stack inserters are getting items to fill the belt with, that this is not a terrible way to go. It's much better than just fast inserters. So one common improvement that people go with, whoops, let's get this the correct way, is to side load. Side load is, as you can see, just throwing items on and then connecting them to the side of the belt, and it kind of fills in the gaps. We you can kind of see it happen. You can kind of see it happening in some places. There'll be a little gap. And then an item here will zip in there and zip in that little gap. And this is achieving better compression than previously. These inserters, again, are limited to just dropping one item at a time. You can see just one item at a time is coming out. Um, but with just one item at a time this way, that's 38 items on this belt. Before, we were getting 32. So side loading is a lot better than just straight inserting. Um, it's not perfect though still these last inserters are not running and you can there's not a lot of space here to see the gaps but you can still see a couple gaps in here if you look closely I'm not sure how much you'll be able to see within the recording but there are a few gaps in here that are not getting filled so 38 items per second that's pretty good side loading is a big improvement over regular now let's test what happens when we start using um, whoop that's not the right button. When we uh, use those stack inserter bonuses, yeah, stack inserter, capacity bon inserter capacity bonuses, whatever they're called, those researches. So we not only is it taking less room, like we barely fit the one at a time inserters in this space, but yeah, there's still a little bit of gaps here. One thing I've noticed in my testing that is that the left hand lane is pretty much full it's like I don't see any gaps in the left lane but the right lane does have gaps and I don't know what causes that <laughs> I do, some let me see if I can pause it so you can make sure to see it like right there something about Factorio it's better to insert from this side from the onto the left side then onto the right side I I'm not sure why something about the situation has uh, an inconsistency but let's look over here 39 almost exactly 39 items per second which is really good so side loading is a lot better now than it was back in Mad Zuri's uh, 0.12 video uh, I think it was 34 items per second throughput. So this is a lot better. Like this is, I mean, yeah, this is almost perfect. It's pretty close. 39 out of 40 is pretty close. Um, and let's test this with, yeah, okay, with stack inserters. Stack inserters theoretically will be maybe slightly better. Hopefully. It does look like... I don't see any... Oh, no, I do see a gap. 
Like just right there, there's a gap. Yeah, but as you can see here, instead of, you know, barely 39, this is like 39, almost 40. Uh, it was even flashing 40 um, for a second there at the beginning. And now it's like 39.8, 39.9, 39.7, just right in that right in that region. So this stack inserters with side loading are a great way of a great way of going. It it will almost fully compress, but there'll still be you know oop, a few little gaps like right there. There's a gap I tried to pause it when it was up here, but I was slow. Yeah, right there is a gap, but it, it's it's good. It's it's a really good way of going. Side loading is not perfect though, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, another way of going. If you don't know about this, it's the underground belt trick. There's some strangeness with underground belts where if you're inserting onto an underground belt, you have priority over the belt that's feeding the underground belt. So you, like you can see this belt up here is stopping whenever an inserter drops items up here which is just very strange like that definitely didn't happen earlier when we were just inserting onto the belt something about uh, the underground belts has done this uh, it's just a peculiar I don't I shouldn't have tried to use that word it's strange is what I'm trying to say and it is fully compressing the belt so, yeah, underground belts are great. Um, they are slightly more expensive than a regular belt, of course, but they do fully compress the belt, so that is important to know. Let's just do that. And, of course, let's just try it with stack inserters. If fast inserters are fully compressing it, we should expect that stack inserters also fully compress it, right? So let's just test. And let's get those 10 second, the 10 second buffer going. And actually, with stack inserters, it's not fully compressing. You can see little gaps here and there. And I'm not sure what's causing this, because you would think the fast inserters can do it, stack inserters could do it better. But for some reason, stack inserters don't work as well. It's, we're getting almost 40, but not quite 40. Uh, like it's so close to 40 that sometimes the machine thinks it's 40 uh, but not not quite um, so using this underground belt trick I'm going to show you something that is really helpful early on so you have your furnaces right they're just you're slowly feeding your yellow belt from your furnaces but you're not using any special tricks to compress the belt so you end up with something like this at the end of your furnaces and there's space in spaces in between some of the furnaces aren't actually unloading you know it's it's pretty good but it's not great and if we look over here we're getting about 11 items just slightly under 11 items per second and if you recall a yellow belt should hold 13.3 so there's room on the belt for more uh but yeah it's not we're not using the full belt with here so what you can do whoops i don't know why i removed that one that was that was a brain fart okay let's remove this one so we just replaced the last one or maybe the last couple if needed with underground belts and let's see what happens here well, there's no spaces that you can see, right? This looks pretty pretty compact. And if we look over here at the numbers, 13 and it's it is oscillating a bit more, but it is it is right at like 13.2, 13.1, which is really good compression for early game when all it cost you was one underground one pair of underground belts to fully compress this. So Early on, this is a very important trick, like your first furnaces, uh, that early on. So yeah, I think that's all the information, all the tests that I have. Um, one thing to 
note is that since um, version 0 0.12, it is a lot easier to compress the belt. Uh, back in Mad Zuri's video, um, underground belts didn't fully compress. Uh, side loading didn't fully compress. There weren't stack inserters. It so it's a lot easier now. So that's great, but it's still important to eke out every little bit of value you can. So doing a little trick like this, when you can to compress a belt just a slight bit more, will help you down the road in your factory. So uh, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, post them in the comments or message me. Uh, in like in the youtube comments i mean or in the reddit thread or wherever wherever you can get a hold of me um is fine and uh i'll be happy to help so thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys next time